Has this ever happened to you? Likely not if you're not a cat. Catnip remains one of the most popular legal ways to make cats go bananas. But what is it really? What is it doing to the cats? Is it some weakness in the cats or is it somehow beneficial to them that they react this way? Thankfully, we can finally answer a few of these questions thanks to a study published just this year. So first off, where does catnip come from? Well, it comes from the catnip plant. There's a few species here, some called catnip, some called catmint, all affecting cats in more or less the same way. So for simplicity, I'll just be using the two names pretty much interchangeably. But the plant I'm mostly showing here is catmint because, well, <laughs> it tastes better and that's what I have more of. All of them are mints native to Africa and Asia and uh, all in the genus Nepeta, which if you look that up on Wiktionary, you'll find one of the least helpful etymologies I've ever seen in a dictionary. This one is catnip proper and it's got a smell like, I don't know, kind of a, a almost a smoky minty flavor to it. This one here is in the cat mint category. This has to be one of my favorite plant smells right here. It's got a, a minty freshness to it, a bit of a fruity edge, and I don't know, maybe a hint of cedar. I can kind of relate to the cats wanting to roll around in it. All of these are humanly edible, and speaking as a human, they're pretty spankin' tasty. You can find some cat mints in Italian recipes under the name Nepitella, but uh, other than that, it's hard to find it in recipes. But you can use it kind of interchangeably with how you might use marjoram, oregano, some certain mints. One of my absolute favorite plants to make tea from. Uh, easily my top five, possibly my top three as well. Mm, that's a good flavor there. Some people use it as a sedative or a relaxant, and there seems to be some evidence behind this use, but it's very much the opposite effect it has on cats. And if nothing else, it's great for feeding butterflies as well with its flowers. I've seen a plant around here that was, it was about this big, and just for weeks it was covered with a few dozen red admirals and some other butterflies as well. But of course, what most people know it for is its effect on cats. And what is that? What's going on there? Well, first, it doesn't work on all cats. Kittens younger than six months and about a third of adult cats won't react noticeably. Though interestingly, that third of adult cats will sometimes react to other plants with similar effects. And every cat reacts a bit differently. Often they'll start rubbing themselves on the plant, pawing at it, licking it, chewing it, rolling around in it, uh, which is why we have this one in a cage here. It wouldn't survive the summer otherwise. Some will start to drool, get sleepy or anxious, purr, uh, start jumping around, meowing, even growling and scratching the hand that's holding it. I did have one cat who would roll on his back, grab it with his front arms and start licking vigorously while kicking with his back legs. Uh, mind, he did that to people's hands sometimes too. He was, he was a weird cat. But it isn't just house cats that do this. A number of larger cats, uh, leopards, cougars, lynxes, and sometimes lions and tigers react as well. The effects eventually just wear off after 5 to 15 minutes and then the cat will just kind of lose interest in catnip for a few hours after that. So what's going on here? You'll find a lot of sources saying that some of the chemicals in catnip mimic cat pheromones and that cats will pick them up in their vomeral nasal organs in their mouth which is typically used for sensing social and sexual chemical cues. So what in effect the catnip is doing is messing with the cat's mating behavior. This was one of the main hypotheses for a while but fortunately, recently some scientists from Japan and the UK decided to investigate further into this and see what exactly is going on in the cat's brains with all this. And did so with a set of experiments involving a lot of very happy cats. The results? Turns out it's not a pheromone and it's not received by that vomeral nasal organ. See, the chemical responsible, nepetalactone it's called, it's actually received by the olfactory epithelium up inside the nose, which is used more for detecting generic smells rather than social cues. And in the cat's brains, it's not working on any parts that are specific to mating behaviors. It's working on the mu opioid receptors, which those are found in humans as well, and they're connected more with a general sense of reward and euphoria. In cats, there seems to be a similar effect, and activating those receptors releases beta endorphins. 
in both cats and humans, it's the same receptor that would be activated by morphine, which you can kind of see in some of its effects on cats. Now, that said, is this equivalent to giving cats morphine? No, it isn't. First, as must be borne in mind for any study like this, these are cats and not humans, and our brains don't work exactly the same as theirs, even when there's directly equivalent structures between the two. And acting on the same receptor as morphine doesn't mean it acts on it in exactly the same way. Catnip doesn't seem to show any of the negative effects on cats that morphine tends to have on humans. Particularly, there's no visible sense of withdrawal or addiction. So that's kind of what's happening, but why? You'd think having this attraction to these plants would be a pretty big disadvantage and barrier to survival for wild cats. That when they encounter these plants in the wild, in the forest, they just spend the next 10 minutes rolling around like a total goof. I mean, it's a bit hard to stalk a moose when you're busy frolicking around like a toddler in a ball pit. And, well, it, it, it probably can be, but there's more to it than that. See. Cats are stalkers. They sneak up on their prey so they can ambush them or jump out and give chase. And that involves a lot of time spent stock still or very slow moving, where any extra movement could give them away and potentially cost them a meal. And this leaves them as prime targets for mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are one of the main killers of humans by disease, and they don't do cats any favors either. And this is where catnip comes in. See, fortunately for cats, and unfortunately for a lot of our songbird population, like a lot of other mints, catnip is a pretty effective mosquito repellent. See, a lot of these strange cat behaviors, the rolling, the clawing, the licking, they have one thing in common. They damage the leaves and the little fluid-filled hairs that they're covered in. When these hairs, or trichomes as they're called, break, they release several chemicals, including nepetalactone, into the air. So the more a cat rolls on it, rubs it, kicks it, whatever, the more nepetalactone sprays out and gets onto the cat. And interestingly, while licking the plant is common, oral doses of nepetalactone, turns out they actually don't do anything for the cat. But the licking does break more trichomes, so more of those chemicals are released. The study did confirm that catnip repels Aedes albopictus mosquitoes, as well as likely Aedes aegypti, two of the worst mosquitoes out there for disease transmission, carrying yellow fever, dengue, Zika, and a host of other subpar health events. And so, well, finding catnip might cause a reduction in the cat's dignity, at least the cat could end up less diseased, or less dead than it would be without the catnip. Now, before I wrap up with the cat montage, there's one more peculiar fact about these plants. That chemical, nepetalactone, what is the benefit for the plant? Well, it repels a lot of insects, but apparently for aphids, it's a sex pheromone. You heard that right. And that's kind of weird considering aphids are a major pest for catnip. Like influencing the aphids on you to reproduce and multiply more, that just doesn't sound like a good strategy. But it turns out, first, since aphids rarely reproduce sexually in the summer, it's mostly asexual reproduction, it doesn't actually cause an increase in the aphid's numbers. And second, it turns out one of aphid's major predators, lacewings, well, they're attracted to that nepetalactone smell, because it's also a chemical in their development cycle, but they can't make it themselves, so they actually need to seek it out in aphids that are producing it and eat them. So catnip putting out this aphid sex pheromone actually makes lacewings come along looking for aphids to eat. And in a roundabout way, the plant is controlling the aphid numbers. And so, well, as far as I can tell, this whole cat attraction thing, it doesn't really benefit the plant at all, probably more harm than good. This at least is a significant benefit. That's pretty nifty in my books. But many of you are probably here for the cat footage so I'll stop talking soon, and as always, if you have any corrections, suggestions, or disparaging remarks, or good recipes with catnip, feel free to comment down below. And if you'd like to support my channel, see more videos about plants I find interesting, liking and subscribing really helps me out. But without further ado, release the cats. Mm -hmm.